was the last time you went into a record store and you didn't find a copy of Bob Marley and the Wailers Legend? Well, never. It's everywhere. You can buy it in Walmart, in the supermarket. Why can you do that? You've got all these new releases and you've always got the Bob Marley one. Well, it's timeless music. It's classic music. Not only that, it's never gone out of fashion. But from a musician's perspective, the reason it's so good is because the playing on those records is of such immense quality. It's real, proper musicianship. Now, what I've done here is I've recorded a reggae tune on my iPad on GarageBand, and that's a little excerpt from it. So all those instruments there, I've played all those in, and for the next hour, I think, depending on the length of this video, for the next hour, you can see how I've recorded each part. And there are timestamps below in the box, in the description box, so you can skip to a particular place. Anyway, sit back and enjoy, and I hope you get something out of it. Now with the drums, I need to go really basic to start off with. We don't want to have all this sort of complicated rhythmic stuff because that's going to actually come in other parts. So if I select acoustic drums, I've decided on a tempo of 61 beats per minute. Pretty random, but it just feels right. Now at this tempo, one BPM does make all the difference. So 61 is what I've decided, so I'm going to stick to it. Now I'm going to record some tracks. Now, I'm going to record these separately. Why am I going to do that? Well, I want to be able to mix the drums in my own way without just mixing them, without them being sort of pre-programmed into GarageBand. So, offbeat snare and offbeat kick. Let's do the, the snare first. Okay, so I've recorded a bar of snare and a bar of kick. I'm going to duplicate this track, there we go. I'm going to split at this position, like that, and then I'm going to drag my kick drum onto a separate track. And they will also, also be quantized, because they are by default when you open up a drum sound. That's fine. So at the moment I'm going to also set an eight bar loop, as I want some sort of interest in other parts. So I'm going to loop this, and I'm going to loop that. There we go. Now, I'm going to duplicate this track once again, and I'm going to record some on-beat hi-hats. Why did I record four bars? Well, I just want that, those sort of uh, different volume levels. It's really important to get that. Now, that's also been quantized because my playing was really quite sketchy there. Now, ideally, my volume levels should be that on the, the second eighth note, I should have a little bit more level. So you can do that, you can go through here and do that sort of thing. And that's fine, okay. Now, I can have a little play at the end, just make mixing that, but what I need to do is to make sure that the rhythmic intent of this is basically determined by what I'm about to do next, which is to record the offbeat hi-hats. Now, why am I putting this on a separate channel? Well, I shall explain shortly. I'm gonna put, uh, I'm just gonna duplicate that track once again, and I'm gonna put a few swing hi-hats on. I will explain in a second. I recorded the full eight bars there because there was more variety again. Now I'm going to go into the quantize pane here 
And I'm going to select 16th light swing. And let's have a listen to what happens. Don't like that. 16th heavy. That's basically what I would had input there. Now, I'm going to go into that edit uh, pane of all of my swing components, and I'm gonna have a little tweak. So if I select all, if we open up the quantization level to snap to grid off, it means that I can just get a little bit more creative with my sort of micro rhythms here. So I don't want the 16th strict do, 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 do swing, I want to make it slightly less so. So I'm just going to grab that and just move it back ever so slightly. I quite like that. I don't like it really, really swingy. So what I did was I switched the snap to grid off and I've now got my, I've made my own quantization level simply by tweaking the swing of those hi-hats. Now I can do all my percussion and all that later, but now for now, I've got something that I can then put my bass line to. Now for the bass, I've got my Fender Precision bass here. It's got flat wound strings on it, so it's quite dull sounding, and I like that. I want that for my reggae tune. I don't want too much top end. Now, on GarageBand at the moment, we've got the drums here. I've got to set the number of bars so that I can record a complete pass, a complete take of bass. I don't want to do any cutting or pasting. I want everything to be as live as I possibly can get it. So I'm just going to make this uh, now to 18 bars because I've, I've got a, a 16 bar section, but I want a little bit of space at the end to, to stop recording. There we go, that's expanded there. And I need to add a track and add a bass amp. Now I'm playing through this iRig thing here, which is the uh, method of getting your guitars onto GarageBand. You can get quite cheap versions for sort of 20 pounds or something. So well worth buying. So I'm just gonna turn the bass up a little bit and the treble down on my Ampeg SVT kind of uh, simulator here. Uh, switch on the monitor so I can hear what I'm doing. Now I'm gonna use a plectrum. I could I could do that, but I want to get a proper, a real dark sounding sort of short, snappy notes. Now this means that I've got to be really careful to get the swing right. Now what I've done is I've actually turned, I've turned the swing component for the, of the hi-hat up a, just a little bit so that I can latch on to that swing component. You don't wanna make it too loud because it makes it sound a bit sort of false, but if I just turn it up a little bit, there we go, that's better. It gives me something to play to. So I'm gonna record a complete pass of the bass line and there are lots of gaps as you will hear. Missed a note there. Right, so I'm just gonna go and have a little look at that. I was happy with the swing rhythm there. Um, I'm just going to have a listen. So I'm actually just gonna cut the the cut that there and just record from there to the end, just the two bars. 
That was a slightly snappier ending as well. So I'm just gonna check that that's gonna work. <laughs> the tempo is very slow and it's really hard. Now, as a bass player, if you're doing this sort of thing, overly moving about is actually going to help you. It's gonna help you get those downbeats really strong. If you stood stock still and trying to just control your hand, your right hand, it's not gonna gel so well. So while I'm here, I'm going to record a guitar part next, which is exactly the same part as this. And we'll see how we go after that. It's really important that if there are any mistakes as you're going, you need to go back and sort them out before carrying on. So guitar next. Now for the guitar, so I'm gonna double that bass part as exactly as I can get it. Now I've got uh, my Fender Stratocaster here. I'm gonna use the bridge pickup so I can get a real good load of sort of top end that will sort of go with that bass, rather complemented in frequency terms. Right, on GarageBand I've got my bass line that showing there with my little edit at the end. Don't tell anyone. And I'm gonna add a clean guitar sound and I quite fancy a sort of Fender amp. I wonder what we've got here. Ooh, nice, I wonder what that sounds like. Let's go to monitor. Yeah. Proper sort of toppy guitar amp. Now, I don't want too much volume level when I'm actually using the guitar amp and recording to the bass. I'd rather have good tonal control but not overpower that bass because I want to be able to hear it. So I'm just going to do a little dry run to see what happens if I try recording with that bass. Okay, I think that's okay. This is the first line on the bass. It's a little bit more swung than the other lines, but I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna try and do that on the guitar. Yeah, okay, here we go. So here's the take on guitar. and I went up at the end on that note. Now, there was a little problem about bar seven or eight. There it was, there was a note wrong there. So, I'm just gonna go back and record that. Now, when I'm editing something in the middle, I'll just split the track for that one bar. Get rid of what was there. Uh, delete, there we go. And then just record that. In fact, I'm going to record the two bars because there's a note that goes over that bar line and I don't want there to be a click. So I'm just gonna record those two bars. Oh, 
little sort of fizzy wow at the end. That's okay. It's the thing is all these individual things as you go through, you begin to hear them every time in the mix and begin to sort of warm to them. So I'll just check that. Now that did rush, unfortunately. So I've got to do that again, but don't worry, it's fine. You can see basically from the procedure here that things have got to be as good as you possibly get them. There's no point in opting for second best. I'm happy with that. Now, there's one guitar part. And of course that's doubling the bass. Now, Let's think about some, some skank parts. So off beats, that, so it's called skank, where you get that. Now, ideally, what I would like to do is to create two parts, one on the left and one on the right when I'm mixing. But for now, I'm just going to record another part, just one of these parts. I'm going to, get to have a clean sound and I'm going to opt for a slightly different amplifier sound, just so that I can get a real no, nice load of treble, very, very clean sound. Just switch the monitor on there. That's the sort of thing that I want. Now I'm going to take the reverb off. Now I could have done that on the other amp as well. Reverb can get in the way if you're not careful. So I'm going to just have a little play through. Now I don't want really much level to listen to. Now also, when you're doing the skank things here, really, on guitar, you just want to use those upper notes rather than the, than the whole chord. And you can do that with the swing component as well. Now maybe what I'm going to do is maybe do that in the chorus and not in the verse. Let's see what happens. Too quick at the beginning, got to relax. Shirt button got caught, honest. <laughs> okay, up until the middle section, that was better. That was okay. So I'm just going to go from the chorus bit. Um, so I'm just going to edit that back to bar nine. I'll go to bar nine itself. Just verify that that is the right place. Yep, okay. So here we go. And so I'm going to do that sort of swing um, offbeat. Um, Notice that there's a lot of moving about again with the guitar because we, we really need to get into it. So 
just from that, that was better than with the chorus. Now, it's really important that the, the operation and all of this, everything that's going on here, I'm just working through to get everything right. So in terms of a session, it's really useful to have this. So that's back to the, the, the first bit again, here we go. happy now. Now it would be nice to have a second part of that because also you can change your guitar sound. I've got, uh, let's may maybe add another guitar amp, maybe let's have the Vox AC30 here that's sort of... Um <laughs> Maybe a slightly different sound. You could even get a different guitar. I'm not going to do that now. I'm just going to get on and just use a different pickup and amplifier combination uh, to get that uh, to work. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got my sound, my um, overall level down so I can hear that other guitar. The, the, the little swing skank bits on the second bit. Up to there, I was happy with what I was hearing. So I'm just gonna go to bar nine and then try that. Here we go. <laughs> So there are some guitar parts. Now, if depending on how things are going, I'm actually going to record another one, but this time it's going to be little counter lines. Just tiny little bits that are really in the background. Something like that, but nothing too major. I'm gonna put a little bit of reverb on this and maybe... No, for the moment I'm going to take the tremolo away. That sort of thing. Just see how it goes. Some of that might work, but in any case, it's the sort of thing you have quite low in the mix. 
Now, I'm gonna leave that now, and I'm gonna put some Hammond organ on next, and you can see, you can hear with those swing semi-quavers, those swing 16s, how the organ can really bind it all together. Now for the Hammond organ. Now, as I said just at the end of the guitar section, this is where you can really get that swing thing to gel everything together. Now, the Hammond organ on GarageBand, which I've got set up here, it's a fantastic, really, really good simulator. And I'm actually, I'm just going to use the on-screen keyboard here because all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the first drawbar only. So I've only got the first harmonic slider open. Otherwise, it kind of, it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't gel rhythmically, it just gets in the way. Whereas if it's just a, it's almost like a percussion instrument, but you just, just doing your sounds like that. Now, of course I can go and correct notes if there's something wrong, but ideally I want all the notes to be quite together because I'm not going to quantize this. As I said before, with everything else, you'd want to try and not to quantize things so that you've just got this human feel to it. So here we go with the Hammond from the beginning. One or two notes in there, you know, and trying to get trying to get the D chord and miss that F sharp there. Now, what you can do is you can just you can see the the track at the bottom here. I'm just going to go in and have a little look at that because you can kind of see. There we go. That's a D natural that I want to be a D sharp. You can at a glance see if there are any little nasties going on. Most of it was okay. Um, yep, yeah, there's nothing showing there. That's just have a little. Same thing, same thing happened there as well and there. So it's just reaching that F sharp. There we go. Oh, there we go. Now, those, there was a little note just there, middle. There we go. Where it just, it just got in the way. Now the actual placement of the notes was a little bit iffy at the start as well. That G, the top G, was a little bit late with respect to the other notes and the notes were quite short. Now it's going to bring everything back oh, ever so slightly. You might have to go into proper snap to grid off mode just to get this right because it was slightly early. Just going to go back and have a listen in context. I'm happy with that. Now the organ could could actually be a little bit lower in level uh, and a little bit more bass end perhaps. So I will take the treble so you can't hear the click so much. Put the bass up a bit. We might have to go into the EQ section just to make it sound a bit, give it a bit more body. I'm 
happy with that. Now we're getting close to a good backing track. Now I do have a keyboard in my studio here which is rather nice. It's an old 70s electone uh, organ and I'm going to put a bit of that on it so a bit of, a bit of the grit now. Here in the other corner of my studio I've got a, this old Yamaha Electone keyboard, the YC45D. You can see a demo of that on my channel as well. I've got it running through a set of stomp boxes and then onto the iPad via the iRig that I use just now for my guitars. So it's a sort of sound where you can get a bit of distortion, all that sort of thing. So I'm going to put that on here. I'm going to be very sparing during the verse and then try and make it so that the sections are a little bit different. Okay, now obviously that's very high in the mix. I've got to turn it down a little bit. So the next job is to just do a little bit of preliminary mixing before I put the vocals on. Now for the voices, now I'm going to do some backing vocals first and then I'm going to do the lead line afterwards. Now, if you listen to those Bob Marley and the Wailers records, the Wailers, they are rhythmically as tight as you can possibly get. It's absolutely rock solid rhythmically. And I've got to make sure that I can do that here. Now, I'm just gonna sing reggae music. That's my sort of line and then a few things for the middle section. Now, I'm going to just go to more sounds and fun and clean. Now, what that means is that I've got something with no effects on it at all. I want it to be as dry as possible. And I'm just gonna take the volume down on the slider here. Reggae music. Okay. Now, of course, the whalers were female. I'm male, so it's going to be a little bit different. But the principle is the same. We'll leave the first four bars as they are, and then I'll come in at bar five. Here we go. I'm gonna give this a give this a go. Reggae music. Okay, now, that was all right. Now, unlike lots of other backing vocals and strings that I've done, I'm not gonna layer, 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 layer parts. I'm only gonna have three parts. Because if you listen to those Wailers vocals, they're so dry and so sparse, yet fantastic. They're just awesome vocals. So I'm just gonna go back to my main window and I'm gonna add, or I'm gonna duplicate that track actually, uh, another time, there we go. So I'm gonna put down the second vocal harmony. Now, with reggae music, I made so, sure that the C at the end of the music, that hard C, reggae music, was actually on a swing hi-hat that I had previously in the drums. So I'm gonna try and 
replicate that with the middle part. Reggae music, reggae music. Okay, here we go. Reggae music. Reggae music. Reggae music. Reggae music. Bop, chua. Bop, 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 bada, bop, chua. third and final part and then I shall go back and have a listen to those three and make sure that they're absolutely as good as I can get them. Any errors rhythmically just go and do it again. Tuning wise as I said at the beginning intonation is a little bit further down the list of priorities. Although it's obviously important to get the notes it's the rhythm. Reggae music ah, da, da, de. okay <laughs> Reggae music Reggae music Reggae music Reggae music Pop chua Pop 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 para pop chua Now, if you're going to do an upper vocal, I mean, obviously this is a bit out of my range, but if you've got vocals there anyway, it might be quite nice to sing maybe a top line over that. So I'm going to, actually, what I'm going to do is sing that same one, but up an octave. Reggae music. But I've got to be careful. Reggae music. Reggae music. Reggae music. Reggae music. Pop chua. Pop 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 para pop chua. Okay, I may have got away with it, but just can have a listen, little listen to that. Reggae music. Now, obviously, the K of music is a little bit strong at the moment, but the backing vocals themselves are quite high in the mix. Now, I've got two options. I could go reggae music. I could make the C sound a little bit softer. It involves doing them all again, but for the purposes of this session, I'm just going to make sure that the vocals aren't too high. Reggae music. That's all right, because actually the backing vocals should be a bit lower. So my next thing to do, I think, before I put the lead vocal on, which I think is gonna be my last thing, is to do some percussion while I'm set up here. So now I've got that all in place, I'm gonna get some percussion instruments out. Alphas of percussion, I'm going to start with these, the claves. Hmm, there's a bit of mould on that one, it's obviously been a while. Now, the level on GarageBand mic, these are loud things, they are sub sudden sort of transient sounds. So it way overloads the mic, so I'm just going to turn, turn the level down, but also be quite gentle with them. So I'm going to go from the beginning and just see what happens with some rhythms. Now, if I get a good rhythm, I might cut and paste it, but I don't really want to, because 
of the sections of the song and the chorus. I want to change the rhythm a bit. And that's really important. It defines that chorus. very, very easily um, sort of too loud in a mix. It's got to be something that just really contributes to those drums. Don't forget, those drums were really basic. It's all coming out in the percussion. So I'm going to just turn the level of the claves down. The recording level's quite high on GarageBand here, but I'm just going to go, I'm going to have maybe a triangle just at the beginning of each section. maybe just at the beginning of where the backing vocals come in. So nice and sparse here, not too much triangle. It's quite a, lo a loud sound and also long lasting. So I'll just set a, set a sort of um, a level here. Now it's also quite transient with the mic, not as bad as the claves, but if err on the side of a lower recording level anyway, because it's going to be low in the mix. Music. It's going to have a little listen to that. This is the internal mic we're talking about of the iPad here, so we've just got to be a little bit careful that it comes out correctly. Music. Now it moved about a bit and started phasing with itself, so I'm going to try that again, but hold the triangle as still as I can. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that works. Now I think it just, I didn't quite get the beginning of that. No matter, it's only one thing. So back to bar five and that's a better hit anyway. That was better. There wasn't any, there were some extraneous sounds the last time. That'll do, you know. And also, because it's triangle and a single hit, I can just cut and paste that. Oh, I said I wasn't going to do that. So, <clears throat> something like this. Things like this are really useful, but don't overuse them. Now, I'm going to go from the start and I'm going to add another track. We can add loads of tracks on GarageBand and it does allow you to do this, to do all this percussion stuff, and it's well worth the effort. So, I'm going to go from the start, do a complete pass, but I'm going to listen out for those claves as well. <laughs> Reggae music. Reggae music. 
I've no idea really if that was kind of a little bit over the top or not, and indeed accurate enough. <laughs> It's not quite what I need. There's too much, this sort of... I've got to start and gradually work my way along there. I'm just gonna do one or two hits. Gonna leave it at that actually, just the intro. Now I could put a little bit of reverb on that perhaps just to sort of wake it up but yet have it low in the mix. Try that. I could always cut and paste that. Now Percussion instruments, you can go really over the top. It can be a little bit sort of much, unless it's mixed right. So I've got here um, a couple of other things. I've got a, a rice shaker and a, um, and a kibasa. Now this is quite useful because it really does help those hi-hats out. We haven't got much in the way of top end. So I'll just duplicate that track and then do a little bit of this. Okay, it was sort of going okay, and then it started to unravel. Now, just for the purposes of this session, I shall just have a little listen to the first bit. It's a little bit rushed. I'm gonna do it again, but I think I'm just going to bring it out for the verse and then back in for the chorus so I can record two separate pit bits. Okay, and then I can come in for bar nine, I think it was, bar nine? Yeah, there we go. I can do a little bit of a different rhythm there, perhaps. Reggae music. might do. Let's have a listen. These have to be really low level, so I'm going to do a little bit of mixing after I've done my lead vocal, which is going to be, I think, my final part. So, lead vocals next. So now for some lead vocals to finish, and I've got those obviously those backing vocals underneath. I've got the mic level quite low so that I can sing as loudly as I like, deep in your soul. So I'm kind of working out my line. So at the same time, we're gonna have the monitor on here. One, two. There you go. So I've got a bit of reverb as well, just to help the lead, the sort of thing go over the top. So here we go. Reggae music, deep in your soul. Reggae music, feel the music in your mind. Reggae music, with you in my heart. Reggae music, go for a ride in your mind. Is the right mind? Music. 
music. Feel the music in your mind. Okay, so that sounded okay. Let's just have a little review of that. Reggae music deep in your soul. Reggae go for a ride. Okay, that's it's basically fluid as a rhythm over the top. It's quite free, which helps to free up the you know the rhythmic delineations elsewhere. Now I'm going to just put one more <laughs> one more thing. I'm going to put just a backing vocal with the chorus. So. Just those bit bits. Your mind. Reggae music. Go for a ride. Your mind. Is the right mind. Pop, pop, pop. And your mind. It's the world. Okay, so I'm going to finish actually. I'm not going to sing a vocal. I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to do it the backing vocal underneath so it's not taking over and I'm also going to stop after the second your mind Reggae music go for a ride in your mind is the right mind pop 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 and your mind that will do it so Except it's not quite good enough. Reggae music, go for a ride in your, your mind. mind. Is the right mind? Pop, 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 and and your mind. mind. Now, if you're doing backing vocals, you can also things like consonants. Your mind. You can actually almost sing with the backing vocals. Your mind because then the lead vocal will have the consonant and the timing will be there. So. So, finally, some mixing to make this sound a little bit more deep and a bit more groovy. Now you can see the entire mix here. We've got all the parts that have been recorded. So we've got the drums, we've got uh, the click at the top, kick and then hats both straight and swing and uh, we've got the bass guitars and keyboards and all sorts of other things and your backing vocals and percussion now it's best when you're doing the mixing just to fling all the faders up that's if you're on an old desk of course but here you can see that all of the volume controls are kind of up and showing some sort of level the first thing to do is to press play and just see what is too loud or what is too quiet <laughs> Reggae music deep in your soul. Reggae music, feel the music in your mind. Reggae music, you in my heart. Reggae music, go for a ride in your mind. Is the right mind? Pop, 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 and I'm your mind. Yes, it's the one kind way. Okay, so, so far so good. I mean, there's, yeah, there's a few things that I can tweak here. Now the bass guitar, I want it to be quite a bit deeper. So if I go to the bass track and then just raise the bass end a little bit, maybe a bit more, a bit more compression. See what that, see if that tightens up with that kick drum. <laughs> Now those skanking guitars are a little bit high for me, so I'm just going to take those down. Reggae music deep in your soul. 
So I've just taken the backing vocal down in that chorus, just a shade. So the um, the backing vocals are okay, but the, uh, ideally I'd like them to be a little bit more trebly, a little bit, a little bit less bass end. I guess I'm trying to make them sound sort of whaler type uh, in their sort of tonal control. So they're quite sort of quite sibilant with not much bass. Reggae music deep in your soul. Reggae music fill the music in your mind. Reggae music with you in my heart. Now that's starting to gel. It's starting to sound okay now. Um, there's other percussion instruments. Now we've got to just check that they are both there and that they're going to be mixed right with the drums. Now what you can do is you can solo out all the percussion, which I think is that lot, yeah, because that's backing vocals and lead vocals at the bottom. If I was really on it, I would be naming my tracks as I went. <laughs> Now I've just taken the direct hi-hats, so that, that, that means the ones that are on the beat, just down a bit so that I can accentuate that swing. But I also want something on that click at the top, uh, just to make it a little bit deeper. So I think I'm going to go and put something like a distortion plug-in. Um, maybe bring the tone down a bit, let's just see what happens with that. That's not necessarily louder now because I've turned the output level of the distortion down, but it just means that it's just a little bit stronger on beats two and four because the click is quite sort of sort of restrained and uh, sounding a little. Now, of course, how long is a piece of string with all of this? You know, you can just mix, so you can keep on mixing for days and days and days and days and not really get anywhere. Um, but for me, that's kind of, that's starting to gel. Nothing is too loud, nothing is too soft. I can kind of hear everything. So really, I'm, I'm sort of approaching the closing stages of this. Anyway, I hope you've uh, enjoyed my uh, take on how to record reggae, and I hope that it uh, gives you a bit of help.